Hey, how's it going? So, for any of you who are RPG fans out there, I wanted to make this video today about a really, really good obscure JRPG game that you might find yourself enjoying. Speaking personally here, I think Tales of Asperia is definitely one of 2008's absolute best games of the year, and it's definitely a hidden gem of the year, and that's going against games such as GTA 4, Dead Space, and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. So why exactly do I find the game so good, and why do I hold it to such a high regard? Well, I think it's because of the gameplay, the music, the characters, the environment, the setting, just about everything about it has so much personality that I just can't get over it. So that being said, I'm going to divide this video into a few different segments. The gameplay, the story, and the characters individually who I think all deserve a little bit of talking about themselves. So in the character section of the video, I actually don't plan for it to be that long. I want it to be kind of short and sweet. I only want to focus on four main characters that exist in the game. Yuri, Rita, Estelle, and Carol. The reason I want to focus on these four primarily is because they're the most important story-wise, while the other three main characters that exist in the game, one of them was region locked, and the other two are, while important to the story, kind of hard to talk about without spoiling anything. So first off is Yuri Lowell. He's the main character in the game and pretty much who you play as throughout most of it until you get the item that allows you to switch party members. Yuri is the morally conflicting character because at first he seems like the nice guy that cares about the lower quarter, but by the end of the game he's done so many questionable things for the type of person that he is that it makes you wonder if he's really a good person, even if he's really just doing everything to protect his friends and people. Next on our list is Estelle or Esteles. She is one of the main characters of the game that is best friends with the character named Flynn. Estelle has a power known as the Child of the Full Moon, which basically allows her to heal people with absolute ease and not needing this thing called Blastia. Last but not least, now we both have Carol and Rita, who I'm just going to put together because they're both pretty simple characters at the end of the day. Carol's a young child with a big weapon to make himself look scarier than he really is, and he tries his best to follow in the Don's footsteps. Rita, on the other hand, is a really young, genius scholar mage that happens to dress and impress just about everybody and is also known for her bitchy attitude. That was a mouthful, but now that that part's done, I think it's time that we start to talk about the gameplay. So I will show off a few of the arts that the characters can do themselves, but for the sake of keeping things nice and sweet, I'm only going to focus on the main character, which is Yuri. There's a lot of combos that you can actually do in the game, and some of them look pretty cool once you unlock a lot of the arts and do a lot of the side quests later on in the game, but getting to some of the side quests are kind of specific. I will now be presenting a video that has a bunch of different combos that you can do with Yuri. My goodness, like, the combo just never ends. Like, that video was uh, a hell of a lot longer than I actually showed. It was actually insane, and it was just so brutal against that small creature that I had to cut it off at some point. But now that that's out of the way, I feel the need to show a little display of a few different arts that some of the characters have in combat in the game, besides for just Yuri. So here's a tiny showcase of arts that Yuri, Estelle, Rita, and Carol all have. Azure Edge! Destruction Field! Ha -ha! You're gone! Sever! Divine Wolf Blade! Ha -ha! You're gone! Wallace! Oh, flickering blaze, burn! Fireball! 
Oh, sharpened rage, run through that which blocks our future. Stalagmite! Oh, mad and greedy waters, rise up and storm the very heavens. Tidal wave! Starstroke! Dividing edge! Hang on, you can just do that? I need to try that myself. Hey, kitty. Yeah? You see this? Carol showed me that I can use this to help you feel better. You want me to try it on you? Okay. So, uh, it turns out that it doesn't work without having a Bodyblastia. Um... I'm sorry, Kitty, but in all seriousness, I think it's time that we move on to the next section of the video, and that's music. I know I had accidentally said story earlier in the video, but I did mean to say music, because the music score is just astounding. And I have to admit, I'm not exactly that good at being a plot summary guy, so I figure this is a more appropriate section to end the video on. Matoi Sakuraba is a Japanese composer known for making music on games such as Star Ocean, Golden Sun, and even the Dark Souls series, and his music here in Tales of Vesperia is no exception as of being a masterpiece. In the first piece that starts off at the beginning of the game, Sakuraba does a really good job at giving the player a feeling of a humble beginning with a beautiful ambient sound that works with the imagery shown on the title screen. Tales of Asperia is a game full of sad moments as well, and the soundtrack with some of the sadder songs does 100% an excellent job at fitting the mood. And of course, last but not least, Sakuraba also knows exactly how to lighten up the mood and make things just absolutely crazy intense moments, and these are some of the reasons why I hold the soundtrack at such a high regard like I do. Honestly, that's all I got today for the video, and I'm going to add in another ending segment. I might do this every single video because it's a good excuse to just allow me to ramble into the mic for a little while. While editing this video several times, I've gotten worried that maybe the presentation might be kind of boring. I tried to do everything that I could off the top of my head to make sure that everything was nice and good for everyone to look at. But, like, if you find anything boring or something in the editing kind of choppy, feel free to point it out down below. I'm always welcome to all the errors that I make in the videos and do everything that I can to make them better. And, you know, it's just nice in general to put out a video that you think has some merit or, like, a nice feel to it. And I just want to be frank that I'm really thankful for everyone who's given me the time of day, even 
though I really don't have too much to say, and I'm just another random stranger online, really. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.